This question becomes so much easier if we just think about it in terms of our favorite strategy, plug points into equations, right? I have a bunch of equations, so that part's obvious. Do I have any points? Well, they, that would mean we'd have values for n. They talk about n a lot, but they don't actually give us any number, right? So we don't know the specific number of people in a tour group because there's no specific tour group. This is an equation that's supposed to represent all tour groups. But if we want to understand the overall equation, why don't we just come up with a point, come up with a tour group? So this is plug points into equations with a little bit of an arithmetize, right? We don't have the point. We're making it up. We're going to just say that n is 26. Why 26? Well, look at the story. For groups of 25 or more people, a museum charges $21 per person for the first 25 people and 14 for each additional person. So the weird thing is the 14. So let's at least incorporate that a little bit, right? Let's get the 25 people and then add in one extra and just see what that would be. Now with the 26, I'm just going to follow the instructions in the question. The first 25 people would be $21 each. So that is, use my calculator, 25 plus 21. Ooh, plus 25 times 21 is 525. And then we have, uh, for $14, we have one extra person, right? That's the 26 people. So that's an extra 14. So plus 14 is $539 for a group of 26. So now I have a point. I have an N, an X that's kind of behaving like an X, and 539 is kind of behaving like the Y, the F of N in this case. So we're just going to see if any of these equations gives me the number I want, gives me the 539 when I plug in 26. So 14 times 26 plus 175. So 14 times 26 is 364 plus 175 is 539. Okay, that might be the answer. I don't know yet. I've got to try everything else. I've got to, I can already see that choice B isn't going to work because 14 times 26 plus even a bigger number is gonna be way too big, so that's, that's not gonna work. But let's try 35 times 26 minus 350. 35 times 26 is 910 minus 350 is 560, too much money. 14 times 26 plus 21, well this kinda of comes back to choice A, it's, it's the wrong number we're adding in, right? So 14 times 26, what did I say that was? That's for 364 plus 21, 385. So look at that. Only one equation gave me the number I would expect. Now, I don't understand why this is the answer. Like, the 14 I can kind of see because that's in the, in the question. But where's this 175 coming from? The short answer is I don't care. I never bother to even ask myself that question. It does not matter to me because the equation took care of itself. I understood how much money a 26 person group was going to cost. Only one equation gave me the money that I would expect, gave me that amount. So that must be the right equation. I don't care why, I just care that it worked. Now if multiple answers worked, I might need to engineer myself a new tour group, maybe 27 people, maybe 30 people, whatever, I could make a choice. Um, but the point is no matter what, I am not trying to interpret the equation. I am just letting the story tell me what to do. And this is just a general rule of thumb on any SAT question where you have a story. In real life, you would not show up at this museum and say, we have N people in our tour group. How much is that gonna cost? Can you give me an equation? No, you'd say, I have 26 people in the tour group. What's the price? And they would tell you. So don't do algebra in real life. Don't do algebra on the SAT when the story is based on real life. Do real life stuff. Come up with a number and pretend you are showing up at that museum with that number and then calculate based on what the, the rules are. It's so much easier. It's so much safer. You will feel more confident in your answer. And this is number 21 out of 22. This is supposed to be the second hardest question. And we got it just by doing a little multiplication and addition. Very simple, very easy, guaranteed points on a hard question.